this. This mechanism is the rack and pinion. Here we have the rack and then the pinion gear. In the rack and pinion, let's take a look. The angle of the rack to the pinion axles is actually intersecting. It's going at an intersecting, it's crisscrossing. The pinion gear is actually on top of, and that axle goes through or above the, uh, the rack. So our relationship angle of the input to the output is that it is intersecting, it crisscrosses. Let's talk about the movement. Let's take a look first at the rack moving, the rack and pinion. For the rack and pinion gear, you simply turn or add your input right here to the pinion gear and it will simply move the rack. The type of movement on the pinion is rotary. The type of movement on the rack is linear. I turn the handle one direction, the rack goes in one direction. I turn the handle the other direction, the rack goes the other direction. That's linear movement. So we go from rotary movement on the pinion gear to an output movement of linear on the rack. Now let's talk about the flow of power. As you can see, the input moves the output, but if I grab the rack part, it moves the input. So the flow of power is reversible. The direction of travel is also reversible, meaning if I turn this handle this direction, it moves. If I turn the handle the other direction, it moves. So the direction of travel is reversible. The speed and torque on this particular mechanism is constant. This works like a one-to-one -one ratio. This is the rack and pinion mechanism.